Do we want to start our 999 discussion? Yeah, I'm ready when you guys are. Yeah, same. So it's been a minute since we finished. And by a minute, I mean a, like a month. Yeah. <laughs> Several <laughs> week minutes. Yeah. And the way that we play these games is like every two weeks we get together in order to play, sit down and, and play uh, six episodes of of the series. So it yeah. takes months to get through a game that should just take a weekend. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> who's to a say weekend, should, yeah. but yeah. possibly. Yeah, because we had our friend just play through Danganronpa and she beat it with him. Okay, like, but I would argue that's, I don't know if that's the ideal way to consume that She binged game. all three games in like two weeks. Yeah, which maybe that seems intense. And we did yeah. that in two years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we took the long track. Yeah. So as far as a discussion goes, when it comes to talking about these games, there might be some holes in, I know, my memory, maybe Mike's. Yeah. Jeff, though, is like ironclad. He is the man well, who's going to guide you, us through. You say that now, but then, of course, like the first question you ask is going to be like, so what was up with June? And I'm just going to be like, uh, uh, uh who? Pass? Yeah. <laughs> who is June? Yeah. You mean candy slash accounting? Candy. Candy. That's right. Oh, so cringe. <laughs> candy was so cringe. Uh, but I will try my best to... Uh, to fill in the gaps as best as I can. And we also have a lovely chat for us, yeah. for the fans who can fill Which us in in more detail. You guys can see. Yeah. Because uh, even I'm not like 100% sure what what June is or was uh, in the, the the normal gameplay. And I'm uh -huh. sure there's already like YouTube videos dissecting like if she was a projection, if she was a physical entity, if she was her but also her. Well, Which didn't is the way. maker... I think I was talking to DHQK in chat, um, and he, he said that the creator of this game, the writer of the game, kind of didn't have a solution for That's June's existence. Yeah. So it's it's very nebulous. Yeah. So there isn't an answer to what June is. It's one of those like paradoxes where it's like, yeah, she sort of exists in multiple timelines at once as various instances of herself. And so it's really a simulation. A Sure. <laughs> I mean, okay, here's the thing, though. It kind of is because we weren't really on a boat. So it is, in a way, yeah. a simulation. Yeah, we were in a simulation of a boat. Yeah, actual boat. Desert yeah, boat. Desert boat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think it's, I think that's okay. I don't think that you have to have, uh, it, it, why do I, okay, you know what? Hold uh, on. I give visual novels and anime games and movies a pass when it comes to storytelling oh, because yeah? as an American woman, uh, I've grown up consuming american media and it's mm -hmm. it's pretty formulaic not everything fits into that formula but most of it you've got that beginning middle and end and it makes sense and it wraps up and there's like uh standard goals that you're trying to achieve when i watched paprika i think uh which is a japanese anime movie uh -huh. i think it's called paprika i finished that movie and i was like what the fuck did I just sit th like <laughs> it was visually splendid, but had uh, just nonsense? I don't uh -huh. remember what that movie's about. I think it's like Inception anime it's about she, dreams and stuff. Isn't she Ooh. just like a? You're, you're not talking Thanks about the double P. The, my favorite the is the TV show, right? Paprika. No, I'm talking about a movie. Well, hang on. Was uh, b before we get too far in the tangent, I'm curious. Was is Paprika like the equivalent of a mainstream American movie, or did you watch an indie Japanese film, an, an, a Japanese art film? No, it's a mainstream. Films? It's yeah? it's a very very popular um, anime movie. It's it, like the top five lists of anime movies you must see. It's up there with a Akira. But I mean, right? But I would I would say that even like Akira, almost like. I guess this is a large discussion of like what constitutes mainstream media because there's a lot of stuff that like America, if you Google like top five American movies, you'd get shit that was definitely not a mainstream hit when it came out. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. Is considered. I would retrospect. argue that pap paprika is is widely known. Yeah. But when I saw it, to, back to the point that I was trying to make, um, when I saw it. I didn't understand it. I still don't right. really understand it. And uh, there's a lot of Ghibli films who even their meanings are, are nebulous right. by the end of it. You kind of have to like sit back and think and pull your own uh, interpretation from it, which I like. Yeah. But it has caused me to just give a pass to a lot of anime and a lot of anime games because I'm just like, well, that's, you, you just that's Japanese storytelling. Yeah. If I don't get it, it's me. It's not them. Uh huh. Uh, but in this case, we've got the actual author being like, nah, dog, I didn't know what I, I didn't have a solution for how the June thing worked. Yeah. Um, but I'm still okay with it. Uh -huh. I still really like the idea because there is a real, not a reality, but there is a way to make that make science, like video game science sense uh -huh. to have her live in the reality that you're in and also be experiencing the reality that she is experiencing when she's what, nine? Yeah. Um, 
if you think about parallel dimensions. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're it's at this point we're basically talking about magic, so you can kind of invent whatever explanation you want and mm-hmm. it'll make quote unquote sense as yeah. long as it's science. Isn't. Jeff, parallel dimensions. <laughs> well, <laughs> so let's move um, from magic to science. And uh, who's the girl in the desert? Oh God. I, I mean the the game. Sorry, go ahead. It might be extra. Like the game heavily implies that that is the mummy. Mm-hmm. And Alice. Ice nine. As of now, yes. Alice. Yeah, all, all ice, ice slash all ice. Alice. Alice. I'm I'm like as of now, she may become a character in Virtue's Last Reward, she and does. it may end up being. Okay, she does. Well, she's on the cover. Like when you see all the characters standing together in the cover. She's gonna. Art. Ki- the, well, we found out the murder of. Versus last reward, she kills everybody. So, all right, we can move on to the next one. <laughs> what? Well, what I was gonna say. Well, because she's a mummy that kills everybody. What if are you I, talking about? She has a disease that kills everybody. Oh, I think they're gonna they're gonna make that. They're gonna a take whole the disease away. Thing. Yeah, okay. they're gonna take we'll the see. disease it's away. Only if she touches people, right? I thought she. Just she should breathed. have more clothes on if that's the case. Yeah. Well, well she's in the desert. Rogue it. Uh, well, so if I had not known that she and was was a a part of the next game, I would have just assumed that that was a little a little joke tag, like just a little like ba da ba ba da ba. That's so like, silly. What a joke. Uh, I mean, you know. <laughs> we were so tilted by the end of that. Yeah. She showed up and all three of us, it was like three in the morning. We're playing this game, just trying to get it done. Yeah. It's gone on for so long. All exposition, and then all of a sudden, boop, look at mummies are real. Yeah. And they live in the desert. I, I mean, on one hand, I'm kind of glad that that wasn't just a, an empty tease. Because, I mean, honestly, so like, okay. Oh, uh, Miss brings up a good point. Miss says, how does she know how to hitchhike? That's my question. Or anything modern. Again, which is why I'm like, <laughs> for me, that was my example of Beth being like, I'm just going to write this off or like mm. let it roll off of me. It's mm. like, look, I get it. You like, it's hard to end a game and you have this like loose end and you're like, Again, if you weren't making a sequel, I think it'd be totally fine to just be like, fuck it, the mummy's there too. Who cares? Yeah. Like, you, you got your story. At this point, everything is just gravy. Yeah. I do, we don't need to, like, explain this and shit. And who knows if there was an intention to make this a, a no. three-part series. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, even... even Well, okay, that's a spoiler. I can't talk about that. <laughs> a different game? For a different game, yeah. <laughs> I was going to cite another example of this trope, and I'm like, well, can't do that, though. Um, I guess, like, should we, should we broaden out and talk, like, very broadly... Just go down the line. What kind of our final like impression of the game is, or give like a loose, what your takeaway is? Just like, did you enjoy it? Yes, no. I maybe. okay. Mostly, I, I enjoyed it. Okay, it was fun. Um, it was a fun ride. I think that the plot of it was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, no, no. I'll, I'll hear, sorry, I'll I'm hear being judgmental. The, the plot of it was that what's his face can't see. He's losing his vision and he uh-huh. can't see faces. So he wants to figure out how to try to see faces again. Mm-hmm. Ace. Ace. And yeah. the only way he can do that is to steal little children and force them into experiments. So I'd that argue that that's see. not the plot. That's well, the motivation of Ace. I, I, I do, though. I do want to put a true. pin in that because I think I mostly agree with you. Yeah. Uh, we can Same. come back to that. Okay. Because I do want to put it. So like basically, but you're, you're, you're kind of, you enjoyed the game. You think that maybe the... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Garris. Could you, could you see that? Did, Garris you? was trying to unbutton my shirt. <laughs> dang, Garris. Dang, Garris. So excited uh, that you came dang. over. But anyway, um, but you think that like the, some of the details of the story or how it justified certain aspects didn't didn't grok to you or didn't feel satisfying? Yeah. Would you say? So I chat's saying that it was a disease and that Ace wanted to cure his prophagnosia Pro- by using the morphogenic field. Okay, so I guess should we just get into this 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 plot point? Then? Well, I, I do want to say that I loved all of the escape rooms. I uh-huh. thought that was super fun, and in a game I've never I don't think we've ever played a game like mm-hmm. it. Mm-mm. So I thought that was super cool, and I love the intro. Like for whatever reason, any of the intros I love of all of like Dang and Ropa yeah. or the, this game because you're like, what's happening? This is, we're on a like trying yeah, to piece yeah. together yeah, the story. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's like super cool. They, they set uh-huh. a mood. Um, and it, it gets you in real quick. So, so all in all, yeah, I like the game have some problems with this the the uh main villains uh motivations mm-hmm. a question about the villain though the mm-hmm. villain reveal how did you feel about i liked it yeah yeah i did too i've mixed feelings i i really enjoyed um the misdirect of being like zero is the bad guy zero put us here zero wants us to die uh, but wants to see if maybe we can survive. Like, that's what was going through my head while I was playing this game. Yeah. Um, but then as you go on... Well, no, 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 that's not true. It's not as you go on. At the end of the game, after you've gotten every single other ending, it is revealed that Ace is uh, the person who's been behind the, all of all of this nonsense, all the mm-hmm. people, all of the deaths, 
everything's been set up to frame Ace yeah. by people who have been affected negatively by Ace. And that, I didn't expect that at all. And so it was a very delightful experience to to have the game explain that to me. Yeah. What I don't like is that the game had to explain it to me. Like never at one point, oh, we got another Risa. <laughs> <laughs> it's your boy, Names. What up, Names? <laughs> Thanks for the reason of Names. How much? 10 months? Holy moly. Wow. You're my favorite, is you? Bet wow. they have you, bet they. Aw, oh, shoot. I lost my train of thought there. Well, so, like, I, I, I guess, same question to that I posed to Mike to you. Like, overall, yeah. your takeaway from the game. Like, what's... I, I assume you enjoyed it, considering you seem pretty... pretty I enjoyed it. it. I expected more... Because mm. everyone who's played this game has been like, this is the best game since games existed. So I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to be really shocked by this. But I think I was overhyped. Yeah. I do think that one scene, though, where they realized we didn't have to kill each other, like all nine of us could get out without any of us dying. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought that was a good, like that so moment was. That's a the thing is that I kind of like, so I, I mentioned this before we started like the official discussion, but I think my takeaway is that the game works despite itself and i think part of what's <laughs> i think part of what's holding part of what's holding me back is like there's little plot stuff that we can get into, and characters that we can get into more detail where i think the game yeah. is kind of bending over backwards to make it's it bends its writing and its characters to make predetermined plot things happen and, and because it needs them to happen for the story and mystery and Ooh, gameplay to work together. he's kind of like a bad DM. Yeah, a little bit. It's that thing of like where I can feel the author's hand like really shoving things together to make oh. it work. Where like uh, it, it's it's the result is stunt. Like I really like the ending of the game, mm -hmm. and, and and I really like the way that the gameplay, the story, and just the format of a visual novel even came together to deliver like a a finale. Like, don't check those; they might be um, spoilers. So That's why they're timing people out. Got it. Uh, so like I enjoy that that it, it all came together for a result that I enjoyed, but a lot of the stuff I had to get through to get there wasn't as enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And partially also I think is because the most fun I had of the game when it when it became almost a little more standard battle royale or horror in terms of its theming and its like mood. Like I love the revelation of like, oh no one, like in my mind, I really like the version of the story where the twist is that every timeline is a different murder killer. Mm -hmm. And then the ultimate twist is nobody had to die. We could have gotten out of this. And that reveal happens in a room with a coffin in it. Like, mm, That's so good. Tasty. Yeah, Turns yeah. out none of that really matters. Yeah. Like it really, there's only one murder and he was a psychopath before the games even started. So it's not like the games even like changed his morals or like warped mm -hmm. him. Like really all the stuff about like, can you trust people? really doesn't like thematically in the end does not matter so you're saying that without those other endings the game still tells the story that it wanted to tell what do you mean because you're saying that it was really cool to have the experience of having each one of these endings be like potentially a different murderer yeah and a different murder it turns out to only be two people i think yeah at most um yeah. and then yeah uh, 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 but you said that none of that matters because at the end of the day, it's just all about Ace. It's all about this one guy. So I'm posing if there aren't, if you don't experience those other endings and you just play this game straight through and it takes you to the, the actual true ending, right? do you lose anything? Oh, no. no what, what I'm saying is that like, so there are th <laughs> there's sort of two thematic tracks the game is operating on, right? There's the theme surrounding sort of the the psychic, like like the sins of the past, reclaiming like uh, uh, your sort of, um, what was taken from you from this organization, the conspiracy, the psychic powers, the, the sort of A plot of like Ace and Santa and June and how everyone's related to this conspiracy where they tried to, uh, you know, kidnap children to unlock this forbidden sort of ability and mm -hmm. it went wrong. Uh, but then you also have sort of the theming and the subtext and the symbolism that the format of a death game brings, which is you have subplots like Lotus trying to scheme of like, who are we going to betray or people realizing that like they don't know each other and they can't really trust each other. Like it, it baked into the way of the, the way it's structured are questions about, well, how do you know you can trust somebody who like, is it better to sacrifice the needs of the one for the needs of the many? Like there are certain thematic questions there that the game could have focused on as its primary focus and it makes gestures towards that with the reveal that there were two nine doors and da 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 you didn't actually you actually everyone could have gotten out alive that mm -hmm. sort of thing but it ends up kind of dropping that and really being way more interested in the whole I like see. in the whole like ah it's a psychic conspiracy 
kind of thing. And like, there's this beautiful, and also like J- Junpei's and Akane's relationship becomes kind of the fulcrum that the whole thing turns on. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like this thing where it's gesturing towards a version of the game that I think is more just personally, like neither is really the correct answer, just for me personally, because of the themes and ideas that interest me, I'm way more interested in backstabbing, conniving, and who can you trust in paranoia mm-hmm. and like human nature questions, as opposed to the love of a of childhood being so strong as to cross the bridges of time to bring two people together through psychic mm. powers. Like that's not like I get it. I get why that's appealing, and it still worked for me in the end. But I, I caught a glimpse of a much, <laughs> a much like darker, kind of nastier, and uh, more, again more horror. I wonder if that game glimpse... and that like gripped me. And I was like, ooh, I want to see where that goes. And the game was like, well, we're not really interested in that. We're... I wonder if the second and third games uh, examine that glimpse. Possibly put on glasses. Yeah. <laughs> Do some LASIK. Yeah, you maybe. can see it everywhere. <laughs> you can see you can see the <laughs> degradation of humanity all up all up in this place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, and actually thinking about it, I'm really like, like, what was this game trying to say? Ah, uh, ooh. Morphogenic fields exist, and we just <laughs> this is the only way to access yeah. them. The Men Who Stare at Ghosts is real. Ghosts. Go- ghosts. Yeah, ghosts. The Men Who Stare at Ghosts is a different movie. The Men Who Stare at Ghosts is... Oh, no. <laughs> well, they're like booze. You got to keep them away. You stare yeah. at them. Oh, gotcha. Uh, it's like Ghost 2. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the movie. Oh, my gosh. What is this trying to say? Because I think, like, my reading of it is it really is about, like, the... the, the oh, the, the, it's like, about human big, connection. Yeah, it's like people can be connected in ways that are more powerful than we have the ability to comprehend. Because, like, Ace the Antagonist is somebody who shut himself away from human connections, who is completely cynical and robotic, will use and abuse people however he sees fit. Yeah, he lacks human connection in all ways. And he can't even see their faces. Such is his, which, a little problematic because this is a real condition, but such is his, like, they use a real-world disease and condition as, like, shorthand for this person cannot connect to people. But anyway... Uh, such as his inability to see the humanity in others and latch onto that, that he can't even see faces. He mm-hmm. can't even recognize people. And so he's the ultimate antagonist, and he's beaten by two people who, through the purity of their love for each other yeah. and connection, just break reality and physics and time and space and doesn't matter. These two people care about each other so much, and Santa cares about his sister so much, that they make this crazy convoluted like scheme work out and end up saving the day. And that's kind of what I come back to. But if that's the case, there's a whole lot of just weird tangents and side <laughs> stories. Like this is not a very like cohesive game, which is not always a problem, okay but I felt that. it. I I actually really like that in storytelling. I am it, more interested nowadays with stuff that kind of breaks the Chekhov's gun mechanic, mm-hmm. where that's the the idea in uh, screenwriting that if you introduce a gun in the first chapter of your story, it better come back and shoot somebody by the end. Right. Um and this game does do that. That this game does a lot. set up and pay off like almost oh. every single thing that they uh, bring up except for the robots. The robot. Well, the robot was talking about like if <clears throat> if a person's conscious, if a person's uh, like core identity is completely Let's see. If that oh, shoot it's like, are we tied to like is is are our we tied identity? To the body? Yeah, are we tied to the physicality and the material? Mm. Uh, is that the only way we exist? Because you could say that else? the robot thing is about the love relationship. The robot is like, can two people, um, do you maintain your identity when you switch parts or do you become combined in some way? Yeah, but it, it is very interested in kind of like, what is the self mm-hmm. in some ways? Like, what what are we, are we, are we parts are we are we material completely or do we exist in some other plane that's able to reach across which again goes back to like the human connection i think we're talking about two different rooms though oh what are you um, talking about? i meant the first robot room where science we, boy science boy yeah where we find out that um what lotus is like a magical genius with computers but do you remember what she was what? talking about when she was a magical genius with computers no I don't uh, it was all oh shoot man that was like Again, a year ago that was that was the conversation was essentially she was like look this is kind of weird right because the computer is in one room but the monitors in another room and if you were a caveman you would assume that the computer in that room does nothing and it's all in the monitor because that's where we can see mm-hmm. evidence of something happening what if the human brain works the same way our oh. bodies are the monitor and we assume that everything is in our brains because the brain is what we can observe. The brain is the monitor of the consciousness, Mm -hmm. but the actual like human, like the soul or our being is actually 
something else, either inside of us as like a soul or that we are like elsewhere. Yeah, elsewhere it, controlling it. our bodies. Mm-hmm. And that's basically what that conversation was. Again, like int- that, that I think is more thematic- thematically relevant because it's introducing the idea of like connections and beings mm. crossing physical space and time gotcha. basically gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. so i would um, i think that this game does do a nice job of everything it sets up does in some way feed into one of one of the couple uh theses that it's trying to discuss but i i agree with you jeff i think it does fall into the romance story uh, far more than that distrust trust yeah. story. And also the thing I keep coming back to is the freaking like the fact that so the fact that this the, the 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 solution to the mystery of the non-ary games is basically that Santa was trying to like two for one his crazy scheme where he's like okay I want to save my it's sister. It's not his scheme it's hers. Well June okay then June was trying to two for one her crazy scheme where she well, does it did June want was mm-hmm. part of June's thing that she wanted everyone connected to the game to die because that's dark. Wait what? Because Santa, because like the whole part of the reason that eight, that the ninth man and Ace and the ca- the guy with the captain's coat were roped in is because part of the plan necessitates that yeah. Ace kill all his comrades. Yeah. So it's like so part of her scheme is that yeah. she wants to enact this like crazy uh, Count she, of Monte she's Cristo. She's giving she's giving Ace the agency though. She's right. doing the saw thing where like she's not the one killing anybody, but right. she is setting Ace up to fulfill this destiny. Right, which does not feed into the whole idea like which is a pretty brutal thing when the thesis of your game is basically that like love and connection trump all and but like weird. but like also i want to murder a lot of people in a very heinous way chat what do you think about that because i i did hear something about how june like we don't know who june actually is right we've seen a persona of her we've seen the kind of person that she yeah. presents as oh my god pidgey what do you need to communicate with <laughs> me right now um but like outside of the nonary games i mean it's safe to assume that she and Junpei do have a emotional and loving connection from their childhood. Yes. But there's clearly, if she's the one who set this whole thing up, because it is her, yeah. it's her brother is only assisting her. Um, there's a very, very heavy darkness in uh-huh. there. Yeah, but then that's the thing is that then that complicates the whole idea that they are actually like truly spiritually linked because like it more is like Junpei is Akane's puppet, which is a dark reading and one that I don't think the game is fully committed to. But that's kind of how it works out is because like it's not really love is suffering. Again, Jeff. You, you have to love kinda, is suffering. <laughs> possibly <laughs> again, like I feel like there are like multiple like the game is so just full of ideas and moments and themes and like uh, uh, almost genres the way it kind of like wheels into like crazy horror but then it has this like almost like too sunny happy ending where like they capture ace without you know having to to like really hurt anybody there was no bombs in the bracelets all along so like except but also, for the ninth man yeah and also like people still died like there is that there's still like right. the point of the game was still to kill people just not everybody uh and like it's not, it's not the point of the game right but a Part consequence of, of of playing the game can be right. to kill people. Right. Kill your friends. <laughs> nine nine nine. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Um, and like also, Ace like has this speech where he's like, "I just wanted to to cure, you know, my." Also yeah, you. which I have a problem with, because the way the game mm. delivers it is that we're supposed to see it as a humanizing moment. That mm. like this is that Ace which finally, one? where Ace is like, "Hey, this was all just because I wanted to cure my." I don't think that works. Like, I don't think it does either because yeah. honestly, I am That's more... That's what Mike was saying too. Yeah. I am more clued into the logic of a man who wants to control the world and thus like sacrifices children to it to a man who just has a disability that people live with all, all the, the time. time in the real world and he wants to kill kids to get that yeah. done. It's well, like that, I think that, crazy to me. That goes on to a, a deeper like, okay, so we've got Ace who runs a company who is, I'm going to assume, very wealthy. So you've got yeah, this very wealthy guy who He's can't... like, uh, who's the guy who owns... Jeff Bezos? No. That's where my the car, brain went the to, car too. Be, the, the, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. car that um, runs on... Uh, no, Tesla. You're talking, talking about, about, you're talking about Elon Musk. Elon, Elon Musk. Musk. He's oh Elon Musk of the pharmaceutical industry. Yeah, so That's Elon Musk loses it. his vision. Like, he can't see people's faces. And he has all this he money. He doesn't lose his vision. He has a disease. I, I'm sorry. I'm yes, sorry. It's just that's, important. Okay, okay, whatever. Right. Um, so he can't see faces anymore, and he just goes crazy and uses all of his money. So it. So what am I? What, what was I saying at the beginning? Um, I don't know. My phone's going off. <laughs> Somebody's calling me. Yeah. Um, Do you want to take oh, a quick yeah, break? Because I have to pee. I need to go. I yeah. gotta take this. 
Hey, hey, why are we yelling? Uh, oh, to, Ver to Verano. Verano says the main point of it was not to kill the co game co conspirators, but it was to connect Junpei through the field of Akane. Ace but see, if that wasn't the point, you wouldn't have brought Ace along, and you wouldn't have brought the other conspirators along, and you wouldn't have engineered this crazy, like, clothing swap injection chemical. Yeah, Ace doesn't need to be there for that to happen. Yeah, that's a, that's like vengeance. Only, yeah, the only point was to connect Junpei and Akane. In fact, it would have been safer to not include people who have reason to murder each other and others. Like, that's the thing, is that it's like it's such a convoluted scheme. It's like, yeah. man, couldn't you have saved your sister? Is, couldn't her sister have saved herself and then gotten vengeance? Like, why did it have to be? Like, one plan actively jeopardizes the other. Like, mm -hmm. there's no reason from a, like, logical planning what is the highest chance of success standpoint to mesh your Monte Cristo vengeance plan with your the love will save me plan like there's they they, they conflict like there's, they one act, in fact we have several endings that show why it's such a bad idea <laughs> to do that that's true only one possible in, ending yeah, does in, like the best outcome like six out of seven now. outcomes your plan fails spectacularly um chat's making some interesting points number one they're talking about how we know who past Akane is because she's who's connected to Junpei we right. don't know who present Akane is correct that's interesting the second Second point that Chad's making that I think is also interesting was about how oh no oh I lost it it was so good and I lost it it was oh Akane didn't have a choice she had already seen the future so if this is if if Chad is arguing that Akane is not necessarily doing this for vengeance or for love, she's doing it to fulfill the future that she can see happening. So, like, she has no agency in putting all of this together. Okay, so, but again, now we're running into a time paradox, right? Because mm -hmm. someone still had to kidnap Junpei, and someone still had to kidnap... But it's not... This is interesting, because it, it does kind of talk about, like, the, the Saw thing, where uh, if the mastermind is not the one who's actively using the knife to kill somebody do they have any uh, responsibility towards what they're doing? If she's only fulfilling her own prophecy that she's seen, her own future that she's seen, is that her fault that these people died? Also, I, everyone's like, Ace is the one who killed the ninth man. No, Doug, like, Ace was set up to fail. Yeah, like... By Akane slash Santa. I mean, I guess it depends on if you believe that. Because, like, the only way I could see... The only, at least for me personally, the only way I could accept the argument that Akane's hands are essentially completely clean in this mm -hmm. is if we just say uh, there's no such thing as choice, basically. That, like, predestination right. is a thing, no one has any choice, at which point I lose interest in the story. And also, why would there be <laughs> like, multiple endings if that was the case? Well, again, you like, different time streams and outcomes. Like, I think, I, I again, I want to be clear. I think the game of, had a catharsis and ended up overall working for me. Because uh -huh. I did, in the fun, because one thing I do admire about the game is how it meshed its gameplay with its story in a way that enhanced both, that using both the idea of like puzzles and exploration and multiple endings, which are kind of tropes of visual novels, mm -hmm. and using even the format of like the two screens and the two modes, mm -hmm. using both of those to deliver a story and having it work is That's like a cool. hell of an achievement. And I really enjoyed that. And like when we flipped over to a Kane vision, I was like, oh shit, like this is great. And everything having to do with the Santa and Akane's numbers being different numbers than what they actually were and them going through doors together. Like, the reveal that all of this time through every single branching path that you could possibly take, these these are true, that was cool. Yeah, that is super cool. So there is very like, impressive. There is, like, a lot to like, but I do think that there is a, a cleaner version of this game, and I do think that, like... I mean, there's also just, like, so many little things. Like, Junpei just... His character just fucking like pivots <laughs> on a dime from yeah. like scene to scene where he's like a genius he's a protagonist. and then an idiot. But that happens with other characters too, like where uh, where her ace, this like mastermind, just like bumbles into Junpei's stupid like clothes swapping plan and his you know like uh, 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 word games or whatever and gives it all up. Uh, or the thing where like uh, where Junpei's staring at the body and the game doesn't have a way for him to naturally bring up the fact that he found Snake's body with a bone in its arm so he just starts monologuing about all the, the bodies he's seen for kind of no reason. Yeah. There are a lot of conversations like that where characters are just like, this reminds me, uh, let me tell you a completely unrelated story that's important to the plot, but in normal conversation this would seem like an insane thing to bring up right now uh, in the middle of like a time death game. So like the game definitely has a habit of, again, bending its narrative and its story to like make things happen that it needs to have happened but again i think 
it makes sense because it's trying to pull off a hell of a of a coup, a hell of a sure. maneuver. So, I think Neo Psy dude has our a good a good next yes, talking point. Please. I'm going to run to the bathroom. I just want I wanted to bring up the rich don't care about us. That was what I was oh, going okay, to say yes. yeah. because Ace is rich. He has all the money in the world, but he can't see a face, so he will do whatever it takes, and he doesn't care about killing kids. So see, I like I like that reading. I wish the game shared your sentiment. Yeah, because I think again, I think the framing of the game frames it less as a further example of how shitty he is. Instead, they mm-hmm. view it as like a counterbalance to how shitty. He yeah. Is. So if if, if, if if the game was like, how fucking sad is it that this man has everything, everything. and yet he's so obsessed with what he doesn't have? And mm-hmm. he, like if they leaned into that reading, oh, that would have been great. It, but it doesn't. That would have been great. Uh, okay, so Neo Side Dude says, we've heard you guys talk quite a lot about June and Santa and Ace, but what did you? Th- but what did you think and how much did you like some of the other characters like Seven and Clover and Snake and such? I'd love to hear what you thought about some of them. Um, yeah, it's I, tough because like with Clover, she was such a blob throughout our entire gameplay. She was until, very malleable. Yeah, until we got to the correct timeline uh-huh. and then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, Clover is this different person than yeah. we've seen. I think I came around liking Clover. I think Seven... Seven is such a rock and such a constant, so like I almost like him yeah. the most because he makes the most sense to me. I wish they gave um, Lotus more interesting things to do. That sucks, yeah, because like, why would she dress the way she was if she's a computer programmer? Like, that doesn't make to me yeah. sense. Yeah, and again, if the game wanted to lean more into themes of like distrust and deception, she's the one who's advocating for kind of ruthlessness, but yeah. she feels very. Um, Proppy. Like the game wheels yeah. her out and has her do a thing when it needs to, but yeah. I don't really get the sense that she has. Like by the end of the game, literally, she's just like, what's going on? And everyone's like, we can't tell you. Like just stand by, get taken hostage, and like, yeah. we really can't bring your story to a close. Like even Seven, like his story played a key role in getting the kids out and kind of like setting everything right. up. Lotus just like, she just exists. She's just, she just like occasionally. She locked us in the freezer, yeah. presumably. Well, I don't well, know that's if that's true. true. We yeah, don't know. Yeah, we don't know. But she was just a little aloof when we got locked yeah. in. Yeah. Uh, so she like has useful information and like plays a, a role in certain conversations, but overall yeah. it seems like the game really didn't know what to do with her. So mm-hmm. they just kind of uh, shuffled her around. Like I liked it because seven, seven, we were like, he seems like he's the bad guy. <laughs> and then like, cause he was doing all these jokes and like, and then, well, then when he was doing the jokes, we were like, oh, he's not that bad. Uh-huh. And like, they kept going back and forth and all of a sudden we find out he's a detective and I want to know more about that sooner. Uh-huh. But then we didn't get that. Yeah. Uh, until way way later but yeah i think lotus was my least uh, least favorite because of that they just yeah here now she is a genius and she can get you through this room but other than that she's just there to look the way she does yeah which sucked yeah i uh i i think i came around on liking clover overall Mm -hmm. although i can't decide if i like or don't like that one of the endings is where she murders literally everyone yeah because like on one hand it's kind of fun to like see to like have that sort of uh, that sort of slice of darkness that sort of shadow following her even when she's being like really cutesy and really like i'm just a carefree happy go lucky girl who loves my brother right. to know that like there is a version of you that is like the murders everybody. that is michael myers-esque that yeah. is just the terminator mm-hmm. <laughs> like that's kind of fun to think about i don't know if it oh I, I, I guess it worked i don't know, in my brain too it's like if somebody were to tell me that my sister was dead or like my bro- my older my brother was dead. I would one hundred percent like. I don't believe you. I'm going to look and see for myself yes. because if she knows that he, that he has a fake arm uh-huh. or like a wooden arm, that would be the thing I would look for. It, yeah. Like, of course, you have to look at this disgusting, bloody mess, and it smells gross and everything. But I would want confirmation. Mm-hmm. And she never did that. And she just out of somebody telling her that. Her brother was murdered. Yeah. She just murders everybody else. Like, yeah. it's she, she doesn't seem like a person. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's just me, and, and like that's the way I'm. Yeah, it's tough. Thinking of it, like these are anime characters, obviously. So it's like hard to kind of be empathetic towards a written anime character sometimes. Um, when that happens, when I see like moments of severe trauma, whoops, occur. I have no idea what I would do if I walked yeah. into a room and saw uh, what everyone told me to be your body blown up. That's why I said hindsight 20 is twenty twenty. Like, yeah. of course, like, yeah, me as a player being like, well, duh, we would go check the body. But yeah. like in real life, 
you yeah. don't know what that's going to yeah. do. And she did Neo-sided. try, yeah. like right. she she did in her way try to make it right by doing the math, running the numbers, doing mm. the math, trying mm. to figure out based on the knowledge that she had who did it, and yeah. then and then revenge story. Mm. Yeah, okay, actually, that goes that, yeah that 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 goes back into the other thing where it's like so much time is spent trying to solve a non-existent murder that again that feeds into the whole idea that's of like so who can you time. trust. But then the game kind of drops it and it's like, yeah, well, didn't really happen. Instead, it was this insane murder ploy where you like, trick a man without face, without facial recognition to think another person yes. and you know he's yeah. going to. It's such a convoluted plot. Yeah. Again, it pays Phoenix, off. So, so nice. I'm, I'm mostly OK with it. But man, it is fucking maybe this part of me just being salty where it's like, well, how could I have guessed that? Mm. Like, how on earth could I have assumed that? Because you'd have to be a crazy person. That's what's so fun about the Dangaropa games for all of all of their flaws. And boy, oh boy, are they flawed. It is a it is a joy to be on that roller coaster because you can you can predict what's going to happen. Yes. You you feel like you're a part of. Oh, my goodness. Jaden isn't cool. Think cool to me. You're a bird now. How's it feel to be a cockatiel? What? Hello. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I said the whole thing wrong. Um, it's fun with Dangaropa because you can predict each next step. 999 uh, kind of blindfolds you and then leads you through a maze. And so yeah. when you're at the end of the maze, you go, oh, wow, what a big maze. Yeah. <laughs> but you didn't really experience it. Oh, my gosh. Oh my God. Factory Everyone's is gifting subs to Cornerbird and Nightbot. Goodness. Both of them are very appreciative. <laughs> Holy moly. Uh. Geo says the post VLR discussion is going to be seven hours long. Guys, you're hyping Great. VLR the yeah, same way careful. that you hype 999 because now I'm like, twice. all right, it's going to fix all of the problems. But I know it's like there's no such thing as that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, I, I feel like I've been ragging on 999 a lot. I think I think out of like the, if we were doing the classic heads system of rating, I think I'd give it maybe three and a half or four. Out of I think five I'm, I'm the same way because I enjoyed it. It yeah. was fun. It was a good ride. Mm-hmm. There are flaws, yeah. but uh, yeah, three. It also probably would have been better on its original yeah. format four. of a DS because there were some things where we were just yeah. like, well, fuck that hint. That would have been so fucking cool. But also, like, <laughs> I hear that on the DS, like the I guess novel mode and adventure mode are happening co- concurrently all the time. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can see on both screens. Yeah, and it's revealed that novel mode is like a Connie's perspective. Which is a great. Oh, I just got Ooh, chills. Look at his face. Yeah. I just got chills. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that's really cool. Interesting. Whereas in the computer version, it's like. Yeah, I feel like now. if we're gonna if we're like rope way is our <laughs> is our like mm-hmm. how would I know to figure out this puzzle like which yeah, yeah. one of the puzzles we got um, or even the the like the side of strawberry house that we oh didn't, yeah like, yeah the it's just like we're right there what yeah. what the hell like you don't have to use all the numbers get right. out yeah of here. yeah that get was out of here i know i'm salty and i know it was late and i know that yeah. like, there are probably people who got it and felt like geniuses but i think it's a stupid puzzle. yeah that's, to be, that's the that's the well there's no rule that says you can't play that's like the air bud puzzle reveal yeah like, yeah well fuck you get like, out of come here. on get out of here thanks guardly guard yes yeah, seesaw effect Seesaw. Gravel in the swimsuit. Oh, he did, he did totally the gravel, gravel in the, the swimsuit. swimsuit. So oh much. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, I just... Whoa. Yeah, but... It was fun. It was fun. Yeah. It was wow, Zowie. We did enjoy it. Wow. Anna says, after VLR, my neck hurt for three days. I yelled so much. I was so worked up at the end that I had a tension headache for three days. Do we cool. want to play Not VLR? looking forward to this <laughs> game, then. <laughs> 